Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. To say that we stand with Palestine, if somebody, some country says, we, what does it mean that you stand with Palestine? You stand with Palestine where? You stand with Palestine on Twitter, on YouTube. You killed 25,000 Palestinians. Today, the same Pakistani army, this is the army chief, this is General Asim Muri, he's saying, we stand with Palestine. How can you stand with Palestine and bury Palestinians at the same time? Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like our channel, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. You'll be wondering why I'm sitting here and why I'm not sitting inside the studio. Last time we did something, you know, where we, where we went outside and we recorded and we put it up on the internet. We put it up on YouTube for you and a lot of you said that, uh, you know, Major, uh, we like this kind of setting. So this is an experiment. If you like it, let us know in the comment section and we will take this forward, which means that while we will record inside our studio, we will also record here. A mix and match, if you will. Uh, today, uh, the person interviewing me is my colleague, Harsh. Harsh does uh, research for Chanakya Forum and Harsh also is a budding anchor. Harsh, the truth in this entire case, this Al Ali hospital in which 500 people were killed. First of all, uh, my sincere condolences to their families because these are innocent people. You know, these guys who got killed, 80-90% uh, of them would have been patients. And 10% would have been doctors and medical staff and nurses. Now, obviously, nobody comes to a hospital to have fun. Anybody who comes to a hospital is somebody who is suffering from some disease or some, you know, some injury or something like that. It's not a happy place. So people come here, 500 of them, and they are bombed. Now, Hamas says Israel did it. Israel says Hamas did it. There is another factor. There is a small group in, in Palestine called the Islamic Jihad. This group has been very active. It's a very small group. It's smaller than the Hamas. Uh, they fired a rocket. And a lot of people are saying they fired a rocket uh, towards Israel, but it fell on the hospital. I don't think that is true. And I'll tell you the reason why this has happened is that because today, <clears throat> US President Joe Biden is coming. U.S. President Joe Biden is going to be landing in Tel Aviv. He's going to meet Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, who is the biggest guarantor of Israel's safety and security? It is the United States of America. Who funds Israel? Who gives them weapons and ammunition? You know, who says, which is that country in the world which says that an attack on Israel is an attack on us? This is the United States of America. Joe Biden is coming and this has happened in India also. I just want to refresh the memory of all our, all our viewers, you know, in case you've forgotten. Uh, long back, Bill Clinton was supposed to come to India and there was a massacre in Kashmir in a place called Chitti Singhpura. I don't know if you uh, remember, more than 40 people died, mostly Sikhs who had settled there and they've been there for a very, very long time now, centuries. Uh, 40 plus Sikhs were killed on the eve of the visit of, uh, you know, uh, Bill Clinton. That was to pass a message to Bill Clinton. Then again it happened. Donald Trump visited India. You know, there was this whole buildup of Shaheen Bagh for a long time. There were riots in Delhi. And suddenly, within 24 hours of Donald Trump leaving, uh, you know, leaving India and flying off in Air Force One, suddenly everything was quiet and there was no Shaheen Bagh and there were no tents and there were no people. It suddenly vanished all of a sudden. These things happen whenever there is trouble somewhere and the US president or somebody else is visiting. When some group wants to drag or draw the world's attention to a, a, a certain certain event that look this is happening you see and this has also been done because when Joe Biden comes and the entire social media pro-Palestinian social media is saying oh the Israelis did it I don't think the Israelis did it I'll tell you why <clears throat> Israelis have the latest uh, and the best technology and they know Gaza like the back of their hand I don't think that with the world's media, the world's social media glaring at Israel, right? I don't think Israel is going to bomb a hospital deliberately. It's not going to happen. And even if the world is not, 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 not watching, Israel would not have done it. So I'm not saying that they are not doing it because the world is watching. Even if the world is not watching, Israel would not have bombed. Yes, they want to wipe out the Hamas. Yes, there is collateral damage. So let's uh, understand one thing. Are innocent people getting killed in Palestine? Of course. Yes. This happens in war. When there is a war, there is always collateral damage. We had a war in 1971. Did innocent people die? 
Yes. Was it wrong? Yes. But does it happen? Yes. It happens everywhere. Did innocent Ukrainians get killed? Yes. Innocent Russians got killed? Sure. I'm talking about non-combatants. So this happens everywhere in the world. And I'm not saying this is right. I'm not justifying death of innocent people or non-combatants. All I'm saying is that it happens. There is no war in the history of this planet in which innocent people have not died. It's not possible. It is the nature of war. Innocents will die. We call it collateral damage. To give it a more sanitized feel. You know, collateral damage. But innocents, non-combatants will die. So I think that is what is happening. But no, there is not even 1% chance that Israel bombed a hospital. Why would Israel A? Okay. You know, let's be neutral. Let's be neutral about it. Why in God's name would Israel deliberately bomb a hospital on the eve of the US president's visit? Why would he do that? Why? Makes no sense. Right? It's detrimental to Israel's image. It's detrimental because... So, what these people are trying to do is create a scenario, create chaos where America has to think 10 times. There is so much of public pressure in America that America cannot help. And this comes on the heels of America deploying two aircraft carriers just outside Israel. And why has America done that? Because they feel that Iran is getting a little fidgety. So, tell Iran to, you know, relax, chill. There are two aircraft carriers. These are two battle groups, yeah? An aircraft carrier is not an aircraft carrier, it's an entire battle group. There are nuclear submarines, there are frigates, there are, there are destroyers, there are supply ships. It's a floating city. So America puts two floating cities. Uh, UK has sent boats. Why have they sent boats? They are not interfering in the conflict. Americans are not saying that we'll also bomb Gaza. No, that the Israelis are doing. But the Americans are saying nobody else will interfere. Let nobody else interfere. That is what it is. So, interesting question. Basically, uh, what is happening here is, Harsh, that uh, the OIC, OIC is an organization of 57 Muslim countries, Islamic countries, organization of Islamic cooperation, and uh, they speak very vociferously for, for, uh, for Palestine and sometimes even Kashmir. The thing is that they have never done anything about anything. OIC is a defunct body. It doesn't do anything, right? Forget about sending military. Military is one thing, you know. Forget about sending military. You know, to say that, okay, we are with the Palestinians. What do you mean that you are with the Palestinians? When you say that we stand with Palestine, if somebody, some country says, we, what does it mean that you stand with Palestine? You stand with Palestine where? You stand with Palestine on Twitter, on YouTube. You stand with Palestine on, on Instagram. Where do you stand with Palestine? When you say, if, if I say, Harsh, I stand with you, then I have to stand with you. Right? I can't tweet and say, hey, I stand with Harsh. But I'm not doing anything. You have to physically do something now. If the United States of America says it stands with Israel, it sends two aircraft carriers, uh, the, the, the National Security Advisor, SecDef, and now POTUS, the President of the United States, he's going to be there today. He's going to be there today. So this is called standing. Rishi Sonak is going to land up there. Mark my words. The time is not far when Rishi Sonak lands up in, in, in Tel Aviv. You're going to have the German Chancellor there. The entire European Union, they're going to be there. They say, what do you need here? What exactly do you need? You need weapons. You need money. You need ammunition. You need diplomatic support. What do you need? We'll give it to you. These are the countries who are saying they're standing with Israel. The countries, especially the Muslim countries who are standing with Palestine, are not standing with anybody, actually. And do you know why? They are not standing with Palestine because out of 57 OIC countries, only two or three or four or a maximum of five, let's be a little flexible here, a maximum of five are fractured democracies. They're fractured democracies. You have to understand the concept. Harsh, these are fractured democracies. Pakistan is a fractured democracy. Bangladesh is a fractured democracy. Turkey is a fractured democracy. When I say fractured, I mean that uh, it is not an unbroken chain of elections and democratically elected leaders. That's not true. What is happening here is you have, uh, you have dictators, you have military takeovers. It's happened in Turkey. It's, it's happened in Pakistan four times. It's happened in, in, in Bangladesh. 
in bangladesh uh, they broke all records yeah they killed their own father of the nation i mean not by an individual guy by the military the the, the bangladesh army killed sheikh mujibur rahman so i'm i'm not saying it was policy of the bangladesh army but yeah finally they gave the orders and he was knocked out so you have to understand this concept that none of them are perfect democracies so what happens in a democracy is i'll tell you when 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 people say that prime minister narendra modi is very powerful where does that power come from it comes from un me it comes from 140 crore 1.4 billion indian saying that okay he is a prime minister with that kind of public support you know comes a lot of emotional security for the person who's the leader who's the boss for example prime minister narendra modi there's a lot of security he knows 140 crore, 140 crore people standing behind you if i had 1 crore people standing behind me i would be doing backflips in the market yeah it's a big deal right it's a big deal 1.4 billion people unfortunately in many of these middle eastern countries all of them are either ruled by some sheikh some sultan some military dictator we were talking about uh, uh, bashir al assad sometime back 2 3 days back and uh, we're talking about the egyptians we're talking about everybody look at jordan jordan is ruled by a king syria is ruled by whom lebanon is ruled by whom palestine is ruled by whom hezbollah and hamas actually run uh, political parties there and their armed wings also their terrorists also so this entire system doesn't work how do you unite the people for unity of the people especially in a case where there is a contract between the state and the person so what is the contract it's like china so there is a contract harsh you have you have got to understand it's a very beautiful social contract the contract between a chinese guy and the communist party is that the communist party tells the chinese citizen that i will give you a certain standard of living <clears throat> your kids will go to a good school all right your 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 wife will work in a good place you will work in a good place you will have one or two cars at home you will have a certain income level right this is what i am giving you what i need from you in return this is the communist party of china is saying to the common chinese citizen what i need from you is in 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 return is absolute obedience you will not question me this is exactly what is happening in arab states especially those guys who have oil right we'll give you in many cases free housing we'll give you pensions we'll give you cheap oil we'll give you cheap food we'll give you uh income tax free income we'll give you jobs we'll give you everything yeah whatever you need i mean there is no dearth of money but you will not question the sheikh you cannot question him right so in such a scenario where there is no democracy and you cannot question and there is this contract what happens in that contract is to strengthen this contract you have to have an external enemy here the external enemy is the jew or israel so when you spread radicalization within the system or religious radicalization within the system what happens is that people st- start getting united because there is a common enemy okay they start getting united when there is a common enemy the problem comes in that if you like for example when we were discussing yesterday about uh, you know palestinians going to jordan and then trying to overthrow the king of jordan we were discussing this yesterday that is what it is people are scared of helping palestinians because they know that if we help palestinians and if they come into how many palestinians has saudi arabia taken how many palestinians has uh, has uae taken zero they they will not take palestinian refugees and saudi arabia is the heart of islam saudi arabia is the is the soul the life force of islam makkah and medina are there whatever saudi arabia says has the maximum weight in the muslim world they will not take palestinian refugees as i said yesterday you know everybody remembers black september and nobody wants to you know push the cart too much see pakistan saying that it stands with palestine pakistan has been a palestinian supporter for a long time but again pakistan is the strongest supporter of palestine on twitter on facebook on instagram physically the pakistanis will do nothing i mentioned black september that is what the pakistanis have done with the palestinians pakistani army is responsible for the death of 25000 Palestinians General Zia ul Haq at that time he was a brigadier he killed Palestinians on the orders of King Hussein of Jordan King Hussein gave him money he said kill he killed so Pakistan army killed 25000 Palestinians today 
the same Pakistani army. This is the army chief. This is General Asim Muni. He's saying, we stand with Palestine. How can you stand with Palestine and bury Palestinians at the same time? The Pakistan army has killed more Palestinians in one week, you know, in one week, than Israel could have done in 20 years. That is what the Pakistani army has done. And the unfortunate part is that Pakistanis don't know. They don't know about Black September. They are not aware. They, they, they have not been taught that history. They have hidden that part of their history. So, Pakistan standing with any country, you know, there is a <clears throat> term they use, use in Maharashtra called Panoti. You know, bad luck. Pakistan is basically Panoti. So, if Pakistan supports Palestine, Palestine will cease to exist. Because Pakistan is supporting it. Whatever Pakistan supports or whoever Pakistan supports, you know, that can, that can never flourish. And uh, Palestine is a poor state. One of my Pakistani friends was telling me, I was very surprised. One of my Pakistani friends was saying that these people are such beggars, he was talking about his own government, they are such beggars that they went to Palestine and they requested them for ambulances. Because the Palestinians said, we don't have money to give you. He says, okay, you have these 10, 20 new ambulances, please give us this. So they got those Palestinian ambulances there to Pakistan. So Pakistan standing with somebody or sitting down with somebody has zero value. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. And please tell us how you like this format, this informal chat between two colleagues. If you like this, let us know in the comment section and we'll do more of this. If you don't like us, we'll still request you to let us know. So we stop doing this and move back to our older format. If we start doing this, it does not mean that the older format is dead. We will do both the formats if you like this. So maybe twice a week, thrice a week, we'll do this. And the rest of the four days, we'll do the older format also. It all depends upon you. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.